Mm -hmm. In case you missed the news today, Alabama head coach Nick Saban announced that he would be retiring from the University of Alabama. He would be retiring as a head coach. Going on, and look, Joe, we we talked about this in the open, but I'm going to go ahead and say it again for those who are just joining us and coming into the show. Nick Saban is the best head co college football head coach of all time. More than Bear Bryant, more than anybody, he is the pedestal that everybody, every head coach or every coach tries to climb to catch. He was 292, 71 and one as a head coach at his at, at LSU, he was at Michigan State, and obviously uh, at Alabama. Won two national titles at two different schools. I, I, Look, I will be real with you. Around 12 o'clock when I – know, I don't know if you guys know Message Board Genius. Yeah. But they tweeted somebody on some message board had put out like, hey, man, I got yep. a – you know, I have a cousin on the team at Alabama. There's a, a players-only meeting uh, at 4 p.m. Uh, they – you know, most people think that Saban is going to retire, and I was like – Dude, Joe, I'll be real with you. I was like, this is just some BS, you know? And then all of a sudden, it, it became real. So, made some some quick phone calls. You know, I had a really good friend of mine, really, really, really good friend of mine that's on the staff at Alabama, uh, confirmed the news that it, it was true. And then he had told the team that in a very uh, sincere way, and I think in a very uh, humble way, uh, that it was his time that he was going to be retiring and stepping down as the next head coach at Alabama. Um, shocked? Yes. Shocked? No. Because he did send out huddle, subtle hints. He bought a beach house out there in Florida. He had been doing some things. Chargers, okay, are now not being made anymore, so he can't go buy recruits chargers like he used to in the past. That's just a subtle recruiting joke. Okay. Get over yourself. Um but but Joe, he's the best head coach of all time, and the sport will miss him. But look, Saban has been saying things for a long time. He didn't like the expanded playoff. He didn't like NIL. He didn't like the transfer portal. He would utilize them, but he didn't like it. And to some extent, I, I do think it kind of – I don't want to say ran him out, but it, 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 it I feel like with everything going on, Saban was like, look, man, it's my time. It's time for me to head home. Yeah, I'm sure that there's, you know, there's a possible argument that maybe he decides to retire a season sooner because of all of the extra added stress that comes into play now, having to manage the personalities, having to manage the money that is being shared amongst these players and being given to these players. It's a very complicated, uh, very complicated game right now. And I'm not saying that Saban dips because he doesn't want to have to deal with that but I'm sure that it factored in that it is now a far more complicated job than it's ever been and I, I believe Saban has been one of those coaches that has talked about with the transfer portal era right now that his coaches don't even have any days off you know his his coaching staff is barely off and it's really weighed on a lot of coaches in the industry right now and I'm sure that part of it is factored into this but generally I, I'm I'm a little surprised because I would have thought that Maybe he would have run it back one more season to see if he could get in that position uh, to win one more national championship. I thought that next year made the most sense because a good amount of this team was coming back. There was a lot of really young, true freshmen who contributed for this team that made that run to the playoff that you would have assumed, okay, let's let these guys grow, and then we made the playoff with the young guns. Next year is really going to be the year that we win a national championship. but. Uh, I guess that for unknown circumstances that we maybe don't even know for five or so years until he writes a book or or does a documentary that we really find out why he decided to retire when he does. But uh, as you said, shocked but not shocked. Well, I, I will say that it, it would not surprise me if ESPN offered this man like $15 million a year to be on college game day. You know, he was already on the Pat McAfee show. Which Pat is – go ahead. Uh, well, I, I mean, I'm just going to say, like, okay, Nick Nick Saban, amazing coach. But, like, how interesting of a personality is he? He's not Lee Corso. You know, like, if he replaces Corso, I don't <laughs> – I don't know that they can't go find somebody who's a little bit more entertaining because he's pretty dry. 
Yeah, I mean, he he is pretty dry, but Joe, I I will tell you, having Nick Saban on that panel, they will do that. Sure. I mean, sure. it's Nick Saban. So yeah. I mean, I, I it just would not surprise me. You know what another thing that I think about here too, Joe, is is this. Um it's just a legacy that he leaves. I mean, look at the coaching tree that he has. All right. I mean, look how much he's meant. Excuse me, how much he's meant for the, the sport. And I will always, as much as I've hated him throughout the years, being an LSU fan, he brought LSU to relevance. I mean, he was the first coach in the country that got paid a million dollars to be a head coach when LSU brought him in. He won him their first title, obviously, you know, his first time in the SEC. And I will never forget him. I mean, he turned LSU as an example and what it to into what it is. The Alabama LSU game has been a pinnacle and a staple for most college football t- fans uh, for a long time. Um, this Joe, though, does send a ripple effect. Okay, throughout the entire sport, and I I, I did see something though that I, I did want to mention before we talk about potential candidates, though. Oh. So I so Alabama fans are melting right now and rightfully so. Somebody said on Twitter or X whatever you want to call it said that Jalen Milrow said that he will re, he will be returning next year and that's when Nick Saban said he would not. Uh I had somebody and all, then all... Said, and then said that when <laughs> that when he told the team that he was retiring the link thing you know that's now all over the place right uh that he walked up to to milro and said lank you know let a naysayer know is what he, you know apparently that he had, he had said i thought that that was funny uh i also had somebody uh somebody texted me they're like tommy Rees sent nick saban into an early retirement which i thought was uh, i thought was pretty funny just to add in though to his legacy um and also what this means for college football i don't know if we're ever gonna have a head coach that does this again that goes the entirety of their career or their time at a particular university and outside of his first season doesn't have a single down year they they were dominant every single year his worst years were when they won 10 regular season games that was it those were his worst seasons it is unreplicable and some that know the history of college football like I look back at like Bear Bryant, he didn't end his career as gracefully. He you know, did he, not. He got and beat then, by and Auburn and badly and bo- go ahead, passed sorry. away. Tragically passed away right after he yeah. had retired. Right. Bo Jackson retired him basically with you know with the performances that he had against him, and uh, Saban has done it at a level that I really don't think that we're ever going to see again. But. Uh, man, the one thought that I have after this is like we're really entering a new world of college football. We're we're entering the twelve team playoff in a in an era with NIL, the transfer portal, all that shit, and we're doing it without Nick Saban. There, there isn't a another iconic entity in coaching right now other than Nick Saban, and we're, and we're just trying to figure out you know who who are those next guys, who who's the next up, who's the next wave. That's what's going to be figured out in the next five to ten years. Yeah, and you know what it does? It opens up doors for guys like Brian Kelly, Kirby Smart. I mean, look, Kirby's only won one game against him. Obviously, it was the national title game. Steve Sarkeesian and others that are in the SEC, it opens up doors and avenues for a lot of people. Um, I, 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 I got to bring this up. We don't normally, oh, no. work, you know, and Joe bring up comments, but I got to bring this one up. Ant Marshall, our good colleague, our good friend, our, good, our colleague over at Believe, says uh he's over at the golden boot pod says Dion is not happening alabama is not hiring and they say uh yeah that so before we get into the candidates the two that are not happening they're not hiring Dion sanders i think more so for the reason that it's you know he said he's only had one year at colorado we don't really like for sure know what Deion Sanders' capability is. Plus, I don't think Deion Sanders, he's got enough respect for Nick Saban that I don't think he would be the type of guy that would want to follow him because of all the criticism that could come if things don't ain't go well. To, and ain't got nothing to do with that. Okay, well, the other, Kirby Smart's not happening. Kirby, this needs to just be established. I tweeted this. Kirby Smart, not happening. 
There is no shot in hell that Kirby Smart is leaving Georgia, the team that he played for. And I believe he was a walk on there, or, or he was just like a really under recruited kid. And the way that he has built himself up and built that program, there's no goddamn way that Kirby Smart is going there. If he leaves, it might be for like the NFL. So those two need to be taken off the table because they're not happening despite people throwing those names out. One thing I will say, I do think Alabama has to move very, very quickly. Uh, Ryan Williams, the five-star wide receiver, that does not bother me whatsoever. It, it is what it is. But, Joe, now Alabama football players have 30 days to enter the transfer portal. So let me tell you what's about to happen. Okay, so let me – let me, and you can clip this because I think this is a good talking point. Alabama fans, let me just tell you what everybody else in the country goes through that you do not normally go through on a day-in, day-out basis, a year-in, year-out basis. Joe Sharks are in the water. Because if you think in the realistic truth that people are not going to be tampering with that roster right now, you are an idiot. You are an idiot if you believe that they people are not going to be targeting that the entire roster from stop from top to bottom, they have to move qu quickly, but they have to do it in a way that's very diligent. You can't just hire somebody just because you're worried about your roster. Right. But everybody else in the country, okay, goes through this every single year, tampering and all that. Normally, people aren't able to go into Alabama and pull kids. Well, I'm just going to tell you, welcome to reality. If you think that I'm wrong, just wait a couple of years. Wait even a couple of months and see what's about to happen because it's coming. You do not have the goat to save you anymore. Saban was the face of everything. He could do so many things in recruiting and retention and get, developing good players, hiring good coordinators, whatever it is. He's not there anymore to save you. Welcome to reality. You can think I'm wrong. I'm crazy, Joe. That is going to happen. I bet you it's already started. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about the candidates in a second. If Alabama does not handle this process correctly, which they're probably going to, it is one of the best athletic departments in the country. I don't disagree. If they don't move quickly and bring in the right guy that is going to rally everything and just keep everything in place, don't let the, you know, don't let the sails blow off the ship. If they don't get that right guy in here, you're going to have, as you're talking about, a lot of teams and a lot of coaches coming and trying to grab these guys off of this roster. There are a lot of uh, coaches in this industry that are very advantageous and try to take advantage of a lot of situations. And the minute that this gets announced, th there are definitely kids getting DM'd as we speak, as we're doing this. They got to move quick. They got to get the right guy in. And it, the craziest part about the situation is something that we didn't even really bring up. And I don't think anyone's really brought up. It usually feels like when there's a transition like this, there's a successor in place. But that, happened with, so, that happened with that happened with Ryan Day with, with, with Urban Meyer. That also uh, that was forced. But my point is, is that there was somebody on the staff that there could potentially have been turned what to. What you're and saying we, is, there's there not there's not like a Shashevsky situation. Yes, Shashevsky situation. But we've also talked about Sharon Moore with Michigan. The way that you you're going to keep that roster together is potentially promoting Sharon Moore or Who's keeping on the him on. roster right now that would take over though, Joe. That's what I'm saying. You think Kevin Steele just retired? You think you think the, the players are going to be like, oh, Tommy Reese called me and wants me to stay. I'm going to stick around for Tommy. What? No. They, well, they, I they do. Could be bad. 